Good evening. The launch of the Angat Buhay NGO on July 1 went according to plan. It is a bracing follow-through and also an unprecedented one on the premises and promises of a losing presidential campaign. But its emphasis is on the non-political, public health, education, disaster relief, community engagement. What happens to the political aspect of the volunteer-driven campaign that coalesced behind Lenny Robredo and Kiko Pangilinan? What is the best way to channel the political involvement of so many highly committed volunteers? Let's talk. I'm John Neri, and you are in the public square. What shape should the political component of the Robredo Pangilinan campaign take going forward? With us tonight are two former congressmen who have been politically active for over two decades and who can help us imagine the future of a political movement. Teddy Bagilat is a two-term governor and a three-term congressman of Ifugao. In the 2022 elections, he ran for senator under Team Robredo Pangilinan. Teddy Casino is a three-term party list congressman representing Bayan Muna and a leader of EDSA 2001. In the 2022 elections, he ran again as a Bayan Muna nominee and supported the Robredo Pangilinan tandem. Good evening to the two Teddies, uh, Kong Teddy Bagilat and Kong Teddy Casino. Thank you for joining us today in the public square. Thank you. Thank you, John. Nice you, John. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Maybe just to distinguish one from the other, uh, I will call uh, uh, Kong Teddy Bagilat a Gov Teddy no? and uh, uh, Teddy Casino Kong Teddy just to, to, have our, uh, uh, to have that separation. Let me start by asking uh, each of you, maybe I'll start with Gov Teddy. Um, maybe some personal anecdotes from the, pre, from the last campaign uh, that shows uh, us or that showed you the true nature of the of the campaign behind uh, Robredo and Pangilinan? Kapari. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, thanks, John. No? Um, well, Una, uh, we, we started late. <laughs> we we only declared our intentions October, and while marami ng mga groups that were really ready to push uh, her presidency, uh, was only actually after she declared her intentions and then mm -hmm. after she chose Kiko Pangilinan and after the talk propangangat was organized, na talagang nagsimula yung, yung kampanya. So every time nagkakaroon ng sisihan after the elections, nagkakaroon ng assessment, why this, why that, talagang ko namang sinasabi that, well, that that's, that's part of the uh, Lenny campaign. No? The, the decision-making process was quite... Uh, slow to begin with, mm -hmm. but uh, during the campaign, even as we knew we were the underdogs, uh, wala masyado mga politiko, siyempre nagsilipatan na, dahil, dahil medyo nga hindi ka agad nakapag-decision, pero yung volunteerism, yun talaga yung what sparked uh, the hope that we could uh, hopefully overturn no, what the surveys were showing na talagang uh, dehado tayo. So, um, Yung, especially the first-time voters, and then I could also see mga sectors that were normally not political active uh, suddenly galvanized to support Lenny. That I felt that maybe may pagasa. I'm talking about the LGBTQ mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. the indigenous people, si mga kaparihan, even the celebrities. Normally, mm -hmm. they wouldn't really um, state their political uh, muscle during elections. No? Uh, but of course, it's really the first-time voters that really uh, captured, para sa akin, mm -hmm. no? uh, they really captured the essence of the Lenny Kikong campaign, no? yung mga first-time voters. So, for sa akin, that was something that was really unusual. And I think everybody of us naman in the campaign, every time we talk about our experiences during the campaign and post-campaign, we always mm -hmm. go back to our amazement of the voluntary, the energy and the passion of the first time voter. Yun yung gusto kong pag-aralan talaga ngayon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what drove them no, uh, to, to be different from the millennials, no, from the mm -hmm. uh, older generations and what mm -hmm. drove these first time voters to really uh, uh, volunteer for us during the campaign. 
Thank you. Uh, Kong Teddy, from your perspective, no? uh, first as a part of Isang Bayan and then later on as a nominee of Bayan Muna, and then as a supporter of uh, Senator Candidate Neri Colmenares, who you know was really all out uh, for the Lenny-Kiko uh, uh, tandem, um, what for you? Can you share some anecdotes that show you know the true nature for you of the of the campaign? Well, for me, the campaign was really political. Um, si Gov Teddy was asking kanina, saan ba nanggaling yung volunteerism na yan? Where did mm-hmm. that passion and energy come from? And I think it was really political. I think people uh, did not want a Marcos restoration. Mm-hmm. People did not want a continuation of Duterte's tyranny. And that explains the passion and uh, the energy of the volu- of the the Lenny Kiko volunteers and and this political movement uh, for democracy started even before Lenny Robredo declared her candidacy mm-hmm. and that's what galvanized Isambayan in the first place the idea that we had to unite the opposition the broad uh, what we call the democratic forces mm-hmm. because we were up against uh well, we were up against two of the biggest and most powerful political dynasties who represented uh, the antithesis of the democratic movement. Uh, mm-hmm. You had the son of the late dictator Ferdinand Marcos and the daughter of uh, wannabe dictator Duterte. <laughs> so it was really the, the democratic movement, the political movement that animated the whole campaign. Um, so so there's that, no? Hindi lang simple ano, in love yung mga tao kay Robredo or they, you know, were were uh, were um, uh, uh, impressed by her mm-hmm. work as the vice president, but really it was the things that we were against, no? The Marcos mm-hmm. restoration and the Duterte continuation uh, that fueled. Uh, this passion and the energy. Thank you. Um, Gov Teddy again, and then Kong Teddy. Um, so the Angat Buhay NGO was launched on July 1. Uh, so the, the real crux of this uh, uh, program, I, I wanted to ask, should there be a political equivalent of the Angat Buhay NGO? You call it what, it want, uh, call it what you want. Uh, you know, um, paradoxically, the uh, political NGO <laughs> or Politics Foundation, or Gobiernong Tapat, Inc., or whatever. Should there be a political equivalent uh, of the Angat Buhay NGO? Gov? There has to be. Um, although Angat Buhay Foundation wasn't really structured to be a political organization. That was my worry after the elections, when uh, during the Ateneo Pasasalamat rally, when uh, Lenin mm-hmm. did. Lenny declared that it was going to be this Angat Buhay Foundation. Everybody thought that this was going to be some sort of a shadow government, mm-hmm. a, a movement that will deal with policy, uh, a lot of things, no? even fighting this um, um, disinformation and fake news, because she also mentioned that during her speech. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I had some insider uh, impressions from those who were trying to organize uh, ABF that this wasn't going to be that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wasn't really surprised when uh, she said that the four pillars of Angat Buhay would be disaster, mm-hmm. resiliency, um, education, health, and partnerships. Although your partnerships, that's kind of broad. So it could be mm-hmm. that you might have other movements that are more focused on the political uh, uh, advocacy or political organizing, and Angat Buhay could be a partner in that. Pero yun nga, I have to temper my expectations because prior to the announcement and then i mean prior to the launching and then after that maraming mga you know mga naririnig mo na, mm-hmm. bakit ganito lang bakit ganyan no? but uh, from the very beginning i was saying that this wasn't going to be that um, that expression or permutation of the political movement that the uh, Teddy was talking about no? pero sa akin lang it is probably my uh, my sense of uh, it is that um yung message kasi ni Lenny was yeah, you can always start your uh, volunteerism, uh, not just during the campaign, but even beyond the campaign. Sabi naman niya, mali now in all of her campaign speeches. No? 
Mm-hmm. So win or lose after the elections, no, this spirit of volunteerism has to continue. So kung magsisimula tayo ng ating mga sariling volunteer movements, whether it's the environment, whether it's uh, human rights, whether it's against mm-hmm. fake news and discrimination, that's that's the spirit of volunteerism that we, we got from the campaign that energized us during the campaign that Lenny wants to continue beyond uh, election and even beyond uh, Angat Boy Foundation. But definitely, I do agree that uh, in all the movements that we will be starting, at marami naman, ang usap, there has to be a political component in it. Thank you. Uh, before I uh, ask Kong Teddy, I just wanted to note that the, we're hearing uh, in the background also uh, the, the dogs uh, for, for which uh, Gov Teddy is uh, also famous. Uh, Kong Teddy, should there be a political equivalent? Uh, definitely, I think so. Um, but how that will look like is the mm-hmm. big question. Mm-hmm. Uh if, if there will be a political movement, um, I think it should reflect the very broad constituency that mm-hmm. uh, was galvanized during the 2022 campaign. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really a broad constituency. You know, uh, as far as political parties are concerned, you had the Liberal Party there, you had Magdalo, mm-hmm. you had the uh, Bayan, of course, you had Makabayan, the Makabayan Coalition, including mm-hmm. Bayan Muna. Uh, you you bilang mo na rin si uh, Alvarez uh, what, what was his party ay PDP laban yata yon uh, as far as far as political parties are concerned but you also had all these sectoral organizations you had labor there you had farmers groups uh, you had uh, PWDs LGBTs you have women women's groups so uh, a kind of political movement uh, based on that, that have all these constituencies and probably based on the key issues that united all these people. So, of course, you would have probably human rights there. You would have good governance there. You mm-hmm. would have electoral reform, especially with the, the, the transparency of the uh, uh, automated elections. You would have environment. You would have peace. Uh, so I, I would I would start probably with the with the uni, 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 the unification points or unity points of Isambayan and then mm-hmm. kung ano pa yung mga agreements that uh, Vice President Lenny and Senator Kiko had with the various sectors. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we could probably distill that and come up with some kind of a movement or a network uh, and pro- probably a program, especially for the next three years. We have an elections coming up in 2025. Yeah. That will be mm-hmm. one thing that that we could program uh, or or unite on. Mm-hmm. So depende pa yan. Ang, ang kailangan siguro mag-usap, mag-usap at magkita-kita uli. That's right. Um, why don't we use the, the this program to start uh, teasing out some of the aspects of that big question, uh, uh, Kong Teddy, no? Uh, Go Teddy, uh, if there were such a political movement or there, there was an attempt to institutionalize uh, a political movement, what would the role of the rebel, Liberal Party be? You know, you're a ranking official of that. And in fact, you spent uh, 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 the years before the election uh, setting up uh, chapters in different parts of the country and so on. Uh, what, would the, what would be the role of the Re- Liberal Party there? And I'd, I'd like to ask uh, Kong Teddy also, what would be the role of the Makabayan Coalition in informing that uh, political movement. Go. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, because right now, the Liberal Party is in a flux. We're in on a transition stage. Uh, mm-hmm. Lenny and Tico are supposedly resigning from the leadership. There's going mm-hmm. to be a new leadership. So that's something that we still need to uh, address, including the consolidation of our chapters. Because prior mm-hmm. to the you know, to the big kakampink movement with Sambayan. LP was mm-hmm. the only um, political organization that was actively pushing for mm-hmm. uh, for a Lenny Robredo presidency. And then during the campaign itself, we sort of decided to take a backstage. Para lang pumasok ang Sambayan, pumasok mm-hmm. yung mga iba pa mga organizations, other political parties. So now, syempre, after the elections, nagsilundagan yung mga dating mga kasamang politiko 
Mm-hmm. And so now you're again left with a small core of uh, liberals. So, so definitely, um, I think we we have initially talked that we're still going to be active in the political opposition. But the thing is, um, who's going to lead us now? Uh, especially mm-hmm. with, with Lenny deciding to be non-political at the moment. Ako naman, definitely, there will still be enough liberals. While mm-hmm. the political movement that I I foresee is not going to be political party centric, hindi na ganon eh. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It's going to be uh, um, Conte dimensioned a lot of the sectors you know, coming in, whether it's farmers, indigenous peoples, based on the program. Uh, so it's it's hopefully going to be still like that. Hopefully, some bayan will still play a crucial role, but LP will still have a place in that. Uh, movement or coalition because mm-hmm. marami naman talagang um, constituents who are still into, in a way, the traditional politics when it comes to political organizing, which LP provides an avenue for. So mm-hmm. we'll still have local officials, we'll still have MPs or congressmen right now who are still aligned with the uh, Liberal Party. But definitely, we will no longer probably be in the center of all of this. Kinakailangan na siguro, it's a big movement. And we'll be glad to play a, a supporting role as what we did in the last campaign. Thank you. Kong Teddy, what about the Makabayan Coalition? Kami naman, we're always ready to work with whoever. Ang problema, some, some groups don't want to work with us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, during the campaign, you also had uh, uh, these groups in may, may mga re, Robredo Pangilinan uh, councils, mm-hmm. RPCs. You had... Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, doctors for Lenny, lawyers for Lenny. Um, pero yun nga eh, um, marami dito sa mga groups na sumulpot during the campaign was, they were really Lenny-centric and they were focused mm-hmm. on uh, making Lenny win. So now that she has decided to to be apolitical, as sabi nga ni Gov Ted, or to take a uh, medyo dumistansya sa political, mm-hmm. um, Actually, ang nagtatanong sa amin, itong mga groups na ito, anong gagawin namin ngayon? Eh, mm-hmm. hindi na kami pwedeng Lenny pa rin ng aming, you know, hindi pwedeng RPC pa rin ng formation, hindi pwedeng Lenny, Doctors for Lenny pa rin, or Youth for Lenny, because Lenny has now established herself na medyo apolitical, angat buhay ang focus. And sila naman, of course, they they are supporting, I guess, uh, yung efforts ni Lenny, but yun nga, naghahanap din sila ng more political involvement. Um, of, of course, kami sa Bayan Muna or the uh, progressive and the groups who all, always offer that alternative. Uh, you know, we have our own program, we have our own mm-hmm. activities. Mm-hmm. Uh, pero yun nga, it, it's not for everyone. And some groups who might have uh, more moderate views will probably be looking for a, a, a broader, a more inclusive uh type of political movement. So, kailangan may ganon. At, at kailangan siguro mag-usap-usap. Um, and, and kami, we are willing to be participants of that process. Uh, at meron namang lines eh. I mean, the, the campaign also uh, put us together basically. Mm-hmm. So, I, I think nasa stage lang ngayon na medyo na, na, kailangan pang mahimas-masan lahat. Uh, we are still assessing what happened and mm-hmm. looking at the possibilities and probably from there kailangan din mag-usap-usap. I don't know if the state of the nation address will be one such venue mm-hmm. where all the groups now will have to you know sit down and and talk to each other and say on oh, magsosona na ano pa bang gagawin natin. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there will also be probably other events and other pwedeng issue based kasi yung mga ano muna uh, yung mga pagsasama because it will take some time before we can devel- develop a political movement na medyo platform based mm-hmm. comprehensive but there are issues that are already there burning issues like uh, inflation oil prices uh, prices of basic commodities uh, pwede magsimula sa mga issues na yon na meron namang pinagkaisa na during the campaign so we will see uh, um, yeah and, and and we're open really to working with uh, everyone that's actually my follow-up question, uh, Kong Teddy. No, uh, should we go issue based uh, or uh, uh, from the start try to build a, a movement or an, a, an organization already? No, um, 
Medyo tricky I, I, yan. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do get the, the same sense uh, as you that uh, many of these groups, no, doctors for Lenny, you know, lawyers for Lenny, and so on and so forth, are looking for the next step. No? I, I think that uh, uh, they found some meaning uh, in uh, political involvement in the last uh, several months, and they're looking uh, like for the next step. Uh, Gov Teddy, ikaw kaya, uh, sa, sa tingin mo, uh, issue-based muna, like, uh, for instance, uh, I suggested that maybe uh, resisting the uh, move to postpone the barangay elections is, uh, you know, is something that people can uh, coalesce around. Uh, yeah. Issue-based muna? What do you think? For the moment, uh, issues, because even among many uh, Lenny Tico supporters, there's parang a sense of you know, wait and see what's going to be, um, we're going to be the appointees of this administration, what will be the policies that this, mm -hmm. uh, this the, the cabinet will take. Uh, but definitely there are already issues that are worth um, mm -hmm. addressing, whether it's inflation, whether it's fake news or disinformation. Uh, ang, ang challenge kasi is everybody's looking for the transformational leader that Lenny wants. Mm -hmm. During the last campaign, kaya nga itong movement kasi that was a, something that was uh, underwent a process. Of course, you had some bayan, but it took some time mm -hmm. for all of these uh, groups, though, whether political parties, whether Makabayan or Magdalo, and even all of these sectoral organizations, these professional groups, to band together. And that was because of their belief in Lenny. So now mm -hmm. the challenge... I'm still sure she's going to be there. <laughs> Pero ang challenge na ngayon, dahil sinabi na niya, atras mo na ako sa politika, parang there's a sense of uh, people at least that I've talked to na parang, so sino na? Sino na yung magaling? And I'm always trying to tell them na the message was nobody. No, we, we have to go beyond the personalities. Tayo mismo, mm -hmm. no? Naranasan naman natin ito during the campaign that we ourselves are the movers of this uh of this movement. So, sa, sana ganun. Sana ganun na mangyayari. Because right now, for instance, personally, what I'm doing is just trying to meet all of those volunteers, whether I mm -hmm. miss farmers, no, um, 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 youth, no, just to say na, tuloy pa rin natin yung ating mga ipinaglaban ng last election, whatever it is. Kasi, if, and, and dyan yung movement nagsama-sama, iba-iba yung kanilang pinaglaban. Eh. The IPs were there because they had an IP agenda. Ganun mm -hmm. na LGBT community. Grabe ang presence ng LGBT community but because mm -hmm. they had also an agenda. So, mm -hmm. yun muna. Ayusin muna natin yun. Galvanize muna natin yun. And then let's see, no? If eventually, uh, despite the absence of the transformational leader, but we can agree at least on a number of issues, then maybe that's a good start. But it has to begin now because that's something that I also realized. Late tayo kumilos eh. Mm -hmm. Yung kalaban natin, matagal nang kumilos yan. Tayo, ngayon pa lang. Ngayon pa lang nag-uusap. So hopefully, no? Uh, yeah, see, see, Kong Teddy and, and all of us can start talking immediately right now uh, after we've solved on muna yung, yung mga hugot and, and what everybody's feeling right now. No? Uh, but yeah, dapat, dapat talaga magsimula na mag-usap ngayon. I, I remember Gov Teddy and Kong Teddy in the mid-1980s. Uh, there was a, um, a broad-based alliance against the Marcos dictatorship, and that was made possible because, of, among other things, there was this, there was an actual uh, congreso, di ba? After parang a meeting, uh, an assembly. Uh, I think it was held in the uh, in the Loyola Gym, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, of course, you had people like uh, the old man Senator Tanyada, no, who you know could whip people. Uh, uh, um, you know, uh, to, 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 to come together. Uh, Kong Teddy, do you think uh, that's something that um, uh, needs to be done and, you know, and in the next few months? Is that something that uh, could be in the agenda? I, I think so. And, and I, I think uh, former Vice President Lenny Robredo will have a big role in that. Um, of course, Baka hindi na niya type yung ganong role. But, you know, she, she pwede namang pag-isipan yung kanyang role. If she doesn't really want to be at the forefront, she can be the, you know, siya ang kausap ng lahat eh. And mm -hmm. uh, she is the bottom line for many. 
So she she can probably invite everyone for coffee. And you know, mm-hmm. ano bang mangyayari na? Uh, can start with a small group. Um, pero importante kasi yung sino ang magtatawag at sino magiimbita. Uh, it should be someone hindi necessarily yung transformational leader na parang iniidolo ng lahat or you know uh, but but someone who is acceptable to all and mm-hmm. someone who is also comfortable relating with all all the groups uh, at pwede yun yung role niya and, and that can be a low profile role actually hindi naman kailangan lahat ng pagpupulong eh, you know uh, mm-hmm. naka zoom or naka naka facebook live Uh, but that process of talking and and uh, dialoguing and finding you know what are the options ano ba yung pwede natin pagkaisahan ano yung hindi pagkakaisahan that requires p- getting people together no and not just people who are already familiar with each other like minded na pero yung mga mm-hmm. nagsama nga nung uh, 20 nung campaign na marami doon hindi naman nagsama dati and and uh, i think uh, Lenny will can can play that role as convener probably uh, mm-hmm. or as host of uh, you know a series of uh, uh, coffee meetings kahit mm-hmm. ganun siguro and i think people will be ano open to you know, participating in these talks or dialogues uh com teddy uh, go teddy uh i'll put you on the spot what about uh, senator kiko pangilinan no uh, sen kiko uh, i think uh, especially in the last six years has been very uh, uh, conscious about coalition building. I think he's been reaching out to as many uh, sectors as possible and also as many of the democratic forces. Um, I think he would be, uh, wouldn't you think he would be a good, uh, yeah. he would, he would make, uh, you know, uh, he can play a major role. Uh, go Teddy first and then Kong. Yeah, definitely. Uh, although this point, because... You know, I mean, I'm I'm his party mate, and we still actually haven't resolved what's going to happen with the, the, the liberal party. So I think he and and Lenny and a lot of those who are really involved in the campaign are more sort of in a higher to mode right now. Mm-hmm. Pahinga muna, parang ganon. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's why we don't want to you know badger them into taking action. I, I, I'm sure eventually they will, no? But sure, ngayon right now it's really family time, just reflection, uh, think about their personal uh, priorities for the moment. But uh, definitely, if you're to ask me, he would be one of those uh, leaders that could be tapped in terms of uh, galvanizing a political movement. The yeah. question ko kasi is whether you need a big political meeting right now or is it better if we do it at a low profile mm-hmm. uh, level and, you know, have pockets muna of of consultations or discussions uh, uh, instead of having a, a big grandiose uh, event mm-hmm. uh, wherein you get all of these uh, movers during the last elections to come together again. So that to me is something that I, I want to, to reflect upon. I say we need to play this game smarter. This That's is right. a long game. This is a long game. And, and uh, Uh, kinakailangan talagang aralin yung mga lessons no, to, not just in the last elections but the past six years no, even before that so so yon baka mas maganda na pag-aralin kung medyo small pockets muna of people coming together on an issue basis ako kasi definitely I like to talk to those uh, indigenous peoples na mm-hmm. inalvanize namin during the campaign to still continue yung pinagalaban na agenda uh, and then we move to other sectors uh, but yon I'm not I'm not the guru there, so that's just my opinion when it comes to political organizing. Yeah, I I I, uh, I, I see what you mean. You know, by thinking long term, I, I was in a a forum once uh, the other month with uh, the Secretary General of the International Trade Union Confederation, which has millions of members. So the Secretary General uh, Shannon Barrow. Um, said something that really struck me. She said, you know, uh, when you're fighting for like really basic rights that you want enshrined in different constitutional orders, you need to have what she said, you need to have a 10-year mindset. (laughs) You know, it's not like, okay, we're going to get this done next week or next year. It it doesn't happen that way. 
it needs to be a 10 year mindset she said and maybe that's that's what we lack uh, uh, actually any except i guess for the marcos family who have been nurturing their uh, dreams of coming back uh, for decades no i, I think uh, no one else has had the same kind of long term thinking Uh, Kong Teddy, I wanted to go back to you. Uh, your views about the role that uh, Saint Kiko uh, might play? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, Center Kiko can can play that role. Uh, tatandaan ko dati, this was during the anti-Arab and then later anti-GMA movements. Um, the person who used to play that role was Senator Tito Gingona. Mm-hmm. That's right. Siya yung dati uh, nilalapitan ng lahat. And then he would call these meetings in his house, uh, usap-usap. Um, so yung ganan, uh, people with this kind of a uh, stature who could bring in uh, a spe- broad spectrum of groups and personalities. Uh, definitely, Senator Kiko uh, has that st- stature, um, especially now. Baka wala na masyado siyang ginagawa, so he can probably devote more time for that. Um, I think Senator Risa Ontiveros can also play that role, but of course mm-hmm. she will be very busy in the Senate mm-hmm. in the next six six years. Um, yeah, so, so pwede yon. And in in the past, I think si Senator Jokno uh, right. also mm-hmm. play that role. Um, so yeah, I, I agree. Senator Kiko could could do that. It might actually make uh, better sense if. Uh, the uh, democratic forces think in terms of different leaderships that they need, right? I mean, so they would wow. need uh, Senator Risa, for instance, to be the legislative leader because she's the only one in the Senate. Uh, as you said, no, rightly, she has, she will have uh, uh, many things uh, on her plate. Uh, but they need I think uh, former Chief Justice Carpio and the Sambayan, Isambayan conveners, mm-hmm. uh, pwede yun eh. So, That's right. You know, And, and, kumbaga, hindi naman tayo nagkukulang ng mga taong pwedeng right. uh, mag-initiate ng ganitong mga uh, efforts. That's right. Um, we're running long. I, maybe I can just ask uh, one more question, uh, the two of you. Um, at the start, Gov, Gov Teddy mentioned no, the, the uh, bracing example of so many uh, first-time voters, di ba? Uh, I've also met uh, many who Say they wanted to work uh, in politics. They wanted to work for Senator Risa. They wanted to work for, you know, uh, Mayor Vico and so on and so forth. Um, I, I think their interest in taking part in politics was really uh, sharpened uh, because of what happened in the last uh, few months. May I just ask you, um, uh, Gov Teddy and then uh, Kong Teddy, uh, what advice would you give? To these young people, no, who 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 are thinking of the possibility of a political career. <laughs> Not necessarily running for office, you know, but you know, working. <laughs> okay. you know, I wouldn't be the person to give them positive <laughs> advice when it comes to, to engaging in politics. But but yeah, right now, because that's going to be my focus for the next three years. I no? I'll just devote my energy to talking to the first-time voters, the Gen Z, mm-hmm. as they call them, and, mm-hmm. and of course the Gen A. You know, yung parating. Um, I, I'm focusing on issues that they may be able to respond to, which is environment, um, mm-hmm. indigenous people's rights. Because I've been getting left and right, mga you know, um, invitations to talk, webinars, mm-hmm. grade eight students, no, senior mm-hmm. high, ganyan college. So, yun yung aking magiging focus. But eventually nga, uh, whether it's, as I was saying, whether it's going to be environmental or indigenous people's rights. Kasi yun yung comfortable ako and that's what mm-hmm. I fought for in the last elections. There mm-hmm. still has to be a political component there. Kaya yung binubuo namin movement, ang at kalikasan, which is not connected to Angat Buhay, but they, they just name it as Angat Kalikasan. And most of mm-hmm. our volunteers are first-time voters. Lagi na yung sinasabi na, okay, focus natin is environment, climate action, indigenous people's rights. But at the end of the day, yung, yung ultimate purpose mo is to engage in policy, engage in politics. Uh, uh, not necessarily partisan for the moment because you want to also be inclusive. Pero ganon, it has to be there. So that's why sinasabi ko dun sa mga kabataan, Kasi after the election, sa dahing mga hugot, dahing nag-message, ano mangyayari mm. sa aming kinubangasan. Dahing ko nasasabi nga, this is for the long haul. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, for as long as wag natin kalimutan yung naranasan nyo nung nakarang kampanya because that's your EDSA. That's something na bibit-bitin mo in the next six years, in the next 12 years, no, even. But mm-hmm. darating yung panahon na kung hindi natin naranasan yung ating tagumpay now, maybe in the years to come, doon natin mararanasan yung tagumpay for as long as we don't forget about the values and principles which brought us to the campaign in the first place. So yun lang, uh, as simple as that. Because sayang kung pabayaan mo eh. No? So mm-hmm. it's a matter of really just trying to connect with them. That's what I've been doing for the past uh, one and a half months, just really talking to them, webinars, left and right, organizing, mm-hmm. visiting them. Basta kung meron mag-invite, yun. Uh, go, go, Teddy, just a quick follow-up. Uh, did you say Angat Kalikasan is not uh, related to Angat Buhay? Yeah, we, after kasi the elections, ang daming lumabas na memes na I will be down the you know, the point person sa kalikasan. So sabi ko naman, wala namang pag-uusap na ganon. Mm-hmm. So eventually, I was telling myself na yun nga, the message was you can start your own mm-hmm. movements because yun naman yung empower kayo eh, the last okay. election. So, so we organized this uh, environmental movement. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's still at, in an infancy stage. We now have about 3,000 volunteers, mostly the kakamping mm-hmm. young mm-hmm. volunteers. It's just a matter of shepherding them towards environment, human rights. Kasi yun yung medyo hindi pa politically divisive. Eh. Ang, ang point yeah. namin is, is to try to engage the others, the other side. That's right. <laughs> try to also get to know them. So maybe at least environment, hindi pa siya politically divisive. Pero yun nga, at the end of the day, pa pa rin ultimate goal, which is, you know, uh, good governance leads to better environmental laws, no? better uh, mm-hmm. enforcement of environmental policy. So yun, nabuo yun. But Sabi ko nga, whether Angat Buhay Foundation will have an environmental program or not, we will still have this movement. Uh, so yun yung ginagawa namin. But I'm also open to like, there's a group naman of people who would like to start discussing a movement or an organization to fight fake news and mm-hmm. disinformation. So maraming ganun eh. Right. Maraming siyang permutations. And, and kaya nga I was saying whether right now uh, we can still tackle on an issue basis, pockets of people talking. No? Eventually, sana one yung goal, one yung direction instead of mm-hmm. having a big movement. Unless, of course, Lenny and Kiko would like to say, okay, let's all start to talk again. Pero for now, ito muna yung ginagawa namin. I see. Thank you. And uh, Kong Teddy, uh, your advice for young people who would like to make a difference in politics? Uh... You know, yung mga panahong ganito, it's, it's very difficult to encourage people or young people to join the electro- electoral arena. Uh, siguro nung panahon ng campaign, marami talagang bata yung they were really encouraged mm-hmm. uh, to, to campaign, to be part of the electoral campaign. But after the elections, when the results came out, marami na dismaya eh. Marami mm-hmm. na, na frustrate. Uh, kasi ang, ang message sa kanila, para manalo sa Pilipinas, kailangan part ka ng political dynasty, kailangan mayaman ka, mm-hmm. you don't even have to have a platform, <laughs> pwede kang magsinungalin and, you know, uh, distort and deny the lessons of history and yet, ikaw pa yung mananalo. So, parang ang marami sa kabataan, dismayado eh, more than encouraged mm-hmm. by what happened. Uh, so ang hirap sabihin sa kanila, hindi, hindi, next elections, uh, ano, as long as wala yung reforms, like, you know, the anti-political mm-hmm. dynasty law, mm-hmm. unless we make the electoral system more transparent, uh, and unless there are these political and uh, electoral reforms, it will be very difficult for uh, young people who are not part of the political dynasties to make a difference in the election. So, Siguro kung kung if they want political involvement, uh, of course the electoral will always be there. Pero baka yung mas basic pa, uh, try to engage in movements or groups that are pushing for electoral reforms, for example, mm-hmm. or for good governance, or for civil liberties and human rights. To mga bagay that will ultimately make for a better democracy and open the way na mas maraming progressive candidates ang mananalo. Kasi mm-hmm. napatunayan na itong elect- recent elections that our electoral system are really is really defective. Uh, and, and there is no 
real democracy in, in that sense kasi kung disinformed ng tao, kung terrorized ng tao, if the political dynasties dominate the vote delivery mechanisms on the ground, uh, how, how can you call that democratic? So I, I hope na ang isang lesson ng ating mga kabataan is that political involvement is not just about elections. It is really mm-hmm. a bigger a, a bigger concern um, and the and, uh, issues about issues of press freedom, issues of human rights, good governance, political reform, uh, economic reform, uh, these are equally important. Uh, and the people's movements, social movements, are equally or if not more important than electoral movements. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I hope that um, instead of just you know opting out or going abroad, uh, must mag- Um, mag-involve pa yung ating young people in political movements, not necessarily electoral, which which maraming problema ngayon. Thank you. To the two Teddies, uh, former Congressman Teddy Bagilat and former Congressman Teddy Casino, thank you for your time, your thoughts, your insights, and your work defending the public square. Thank you. Thank you. So, start Small, start with issues, but start now. That's it for us tonight. The next step for engaged citizens is always to take a more active part in rebuilding our democracy. See you in the public square. This is John Neri. Thank you and good night.